additional thing. That means, um, so, uh, forgive me for not having a remote that's equally the same, but that means we're able to look at it here. We'll be able to look at time that way, that way, further on, that going towards you, and maybe time going further away from you in whatever direction. So we'll be able to look at time in that way. And, and when we look at time in that way, we'll realize how that second, with the choices we have made, universes have, um, that the space of the way energy has curved around consciousness has changed. And we'll be able to see it in both directions, for instance, right? And that's the way, uh, if someone's look at time in a three-dimensional format, how they'll look at it. Where the problem comes about, and this is, uh, I would say, uh, for instance, with the way I look at um, Albert, uh, Albert Einstein's uh, theory of uh, general relativity, this is where I have my complex problems because he looks at time, which is perfectly right. I mean, E equals MC squared. He looks at time and says, yes, this is the start and that is the end and light is moving along it. Perfect. This, and what he says is absolutely right. We cannot deny it. E equals MC squared is perfectly right. But what happens if we encapsulate a second. We put a second in a capsule. So we've got this one second. And now we can look at time sideways, right? To the left and to the right. And we can look at it in depth. And we can look at it in breadth, right? So we can look at it like how big it gets, like, you know, like, the stars, the universe, and we can look at it going down, straight down to the um, to the atom, or even smaller bosons or leptons or whatever. So, imagine we could look at time in that concept. Will time still be on a two-dimensional plane, as if um, light is just looking through it, it's just passing through it? And if light is passing through he just here, isn't light passing through also those other multi-dimensions? Right? And if light is passing through those other multiple dimensions, and we're not looking at it as in binary, we're looking at it as a, a, a Boolean observable. So we're saying, okay, fine, it's a spectrum, right, of a second, and light is passing through this spectrum of a second, simultaneously affecting each of these universes differently, simultaneously. Now, would that formula E equals MC squared do apply? Or should we be looking for a formula that, that puts light in a capsule of a three-dimensional volume and says E equals, don't quote me for this, please don't. But I haven't done the mathematics for this, okay, so don't quote me. I will do it a bit later, but not now. Won't it be? Something like E equals MC cubed. I mean, to give it validity to its uh, volume of multiple dimensions. I mean, considering if you want to travel through space and time. So, this is where I see a big conflict with Albert Einstein's uh, theory of general relativity. And this is where I see a problem where most scientists are going to really have a big, big, big um, shift in their understanding of the way consciousness affects energy. And instead of them focusing on moving energy, dealing with particles, dealing with moving those particles, because even if they were able to move those particles to that uh, past, right? How would they possibly, possibly be able to uh, affect the consciousness of the past? And if, even if they do affect that consciousness, they'll still be in the same timeline. 
you know, that consciousness might change, but it'll be in a totally different, um, how can I put it? It'll be in a totally different space. So, if, and how would you make sure that, yes, your information has gone into the spot, to, 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 uh, to the past, or into the future if you choose it to? How? How would, because for anything to go somewhere, we have to get feedback. Feedback is necessary. When we talk to someone, we get feedback, we get response. We get hits, we get, so that we know that what, what has been given out has been received and we, and we accept it, right? We have to get a feedback, it's a loop. So, that's where um, I feel like scientists have to, I'm not saying they should uh, stop what they're doing in time travel. It's brilliant what they're doing, it's phenomenal. But I believe they should look at, uh, uh, especially theoretical physicists, they should look at consciousness and how to make um, not matter travel, but how to make consciousness bend space. Now, that is a goal. Now, that is a key. And if gravity, as most scientists say, is the one thing that is bending space and is bending time, then we should understand how can we make consciousness skip? Do you understand? How can we? And once we understand that and mastering consciousness itself, can you imagine being in control of consciousness, your awareness, your aliveness? If that is all the only time when I truly believe time travel will be possible. I believe time travel will be possible in human form because our minds would have evolved so much to the point of understanding the universe that we can morph ourselves into whatever being, into whatever space, into whatever time we choose because we have just chosen to make our consciousness move from one time to another or one space to another. Um, I'd like to say thank you for anyone who's listening to this. I know it's a bit of a confusing subject, but this is what my understanding has. Please leave questions. I would love questions because uh, through questions, that's how we do find the answers. Those who uh, deny asking questions uh, and just say things are absurd, or crazy I would like them to explain and make me understand why it's crazy just or make me uh, tell me that what I'm saying isn't making sense and let me see if I can explain it better or maybe you could explain something to me that I've missed out and I'd like to thank you for listening to this this is Dr. Idahan on time travel bye